Mobile testing continues at various sites at Miami-Dade and Broward. Chopper 4 this morning over C.B. Smith Park in Hollywood. Yesterday, a testing site opened at Hard Rock Stadium for people over 65 who are showing various symptoms of the virus. Hundreds of people showed up for the testing. Now, the man in charge of getting medical supplies for Florida is the director of the state's emergency management agency. CBS 4's Jim DeFiti had a chance to talk to him about the state's response. Here's part of their conversation. We got about a half a million N95 masks that came in over the last couple of days. I'm expecting another million to come in uh, over the next couple of days, and then a million after that, a million after that, and then another order for two million. What I'm concerned about with that, obviously, is the federal government uh, is coming in and, and taking stuff off the assembly line, uh, diverting vendors' uh, orders uh, to them just because of the huge buying power. And I, look, we, we, we get it. Uh, that you know that they have lots of interest to serve. Obviously, there's a huge surge into New York, but that makes things obviously more challenging. Uh, and then obviously vendors don't live up to their obligations, and then uh, it becomes a, just a, a vicious cycle of we order stuff, we think we're good, it's supposed to arrive, and then it doesn't arrive, or we get a partial shipment. Uh, and we're seeing that really on the collection swab case. Uh, that's you know the two swabs in the vial that allow you to actually take the sample. A lot of time was spent on the COVID-19 test kit. Uh, we have plenty of test kits. Uh, what we don't have is a lot of collection swabs to actually collect the sample. So that is hampering our ability to, to collect more samples and test more people. Give me a sense of the numbers on the swabs. How many have you ordered and how many have you actually received? Sure, we've ordered 950,000 collection swabs from one vendor, 200,000 from another vendor. I'm talking to, to uh, Thermal Fisher directly, which is you know one of the main providers uh, of this in the United States, trying to get it directly uh, from the manufacturer, get it right off the assembly line. Uh, so you know, but look, we've ordered over a million of these collection swabs. We've probably received only about 20,000 of them so far. Uh, from our vendor, we got to push a little, a little push from the federal government to help, you know, fill some gap uh, while we're waiting for the vendors to fulfill their orders. But this stuff is just coming in dribs and drabs, rather than the whole order being filled on a, on a timely basis, which is what, uh, you know, we were promised by the vendor uh, three weeks ago. Is it that cutthroat? Are you actually buying and competing with Texas and Arkansas and California and New York, or has the fact that FEMA has come in? to try to coordinate this made that better? Or is it still a cutthroat competition among the states? Oh, Jim, we're, we're competing with more than just 50 states. I mean, we're competing with everybody but Antarctica. Uh, I mean, it's a, it, this is a global crisis. Uh, there's only so many so supplies to go around. Uh, we only have so much manufacturing capacity in this country. I mean, that's something that, you know, people above my pay grade in Washington will have to look at going forward. We depend on, you know, China, Italy, other countries, Germany manufacture things. Uh, and then obviously when they have crises in their state, it, it, it impacts our ability to, to import this stuff. So, uh, you know, obviously, you know, New York is a dire situation. We here in Florida understand why there's a major surge uh, into New York City, which basically, you know, is adding over 100 cases an hour there. Uh, but but this really is uh, just a, a, a de the demand out seeds. Uh, the capacity uh, for all of this stuff. But right now, I would tell you, it's 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 the wild, wild west of medical sales. Uh, so buying it from the manufacturer, buying it from a broker, a broker's broker, you know, my brother's friend, my cousin's roommate. I mean, everyone is in the N95 business. I feel like the former folks from Lehman Brothers are now selling N95s. I mean, it's just it's just everybody and their mothers is, is gotten into this business. And so, you know, look, I, I take several dozen calls a day, a hundred different emails, uh, and, and we have to do whatever we can to try to get this PPE, get it at a, the lowest price we can, but get it, getting it is the most important thing so that we can serve uh, the residents uh, of the state of Florida, because this is life-saving stuff. It's life-saving stuff in the nursing homes. It's life-saving stuff in the ALFs. It's life-saving stuff for our first responders, our firefighters, our police officers, you know, on the front lines in many cases, and obviously for our healthcare workers in the hospitals. CBS 4's Jim DeFeedy joins us now. So, Jim, let's move on to other developments today. The president says he wants the country back up and running by Easter. What are your thoughts on that? Well, look, while I can certainly understand the uh, religious implications of wanting to try to resurrect the nation's economy on Easter, let's recognize that it's a completely arbitrary day on the calendar, that it's not based on any scientific model at this point. And it, the question is going to be whether or not the president listens to his scientific advisors. In his press conference today, he said he would be guided by that, but there's also reality that he has a real concern about what's going on in the economy. And so that's going to 
to be the tussle that he's going to have to face is what do you do and when do you try to open up segments of the country? And one thing last that I'll note, there are a lot of parts of the country that aren't showing active cases of coronavirus, but those are also parts of the country that haven't had a lot of testing done. So we don't truly understand what's underlying in those areas. Yeah. Easter, by the way, is uh, April 12th. And Jim, the welcome mat in Florida is pretty much gone for New Yorkers. Tell us more about that. <laughs> Yeah, apparently my mom can't come down to stay with me, or at least she'd have to stay in quarantine at this point. Look, it, in all seriousness, it is a real issue. The White House talked about it today as well, that you have this issue of, of New Yorkers, which is now the epicenter. Almost half of all cases are in New York, or more than half. And so when New Yorkers leave to go to other parts of the country, they bring the virus with them. And so the desire to try to have them met and told to quarantine is a really good idea. I just don't don't know how practical it's going to be and how you enforce it. All right, Jim, thank you very much for joining us.